Hey, what's up? John Sonmez from simpleprogrammer.com. So today I'm going to be doing a video on health and fitness. If you want to check out my related videos on that topic, I've done a whole playlist on health and fitness stuff. I know a lot of you are looking for my workout routine. That's secret. I'm not sharing that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, I will eventually. I'm putting together a program. I know I talk about this a lot, but I am testing it and I do have a lot of other stuff to do, but it will eventually come out. I promise you. I'm still, I'm believe it or not, I'm still working on it. A lot of it too is the psychological aspect because compliance is, is a huge deal. So I'm trying to come up with strategies, kind of testing things myself to see where the limits are and to give you some strategies that are actually going to make you really successful with doing this program. So I promise it'll be worth the wait for those of you that are that are waiting but I do answer some of the questions that do are that are going to be covered in the program like this one here which is on fasting and sugar spikes so this guy's name is Datalink and he says hey I love matrix movies <laughs> he says question are you concerned about sugar spikes since you mentioned you fast I would wonder introducing certain types of foods to the body after fasting would cause a sugar spike and with the long-term effect would increase the chances of developing diabetes I would really like to get your thoughts on this keep up the great work so this is interesting so you're right if you fast for a long time and then you eat some carbohydrates, you're gonna have a pretty big sugar spike. But here's the thing, and this is the key, I'm actually counting on that, right? So I'm actually gonna go lift today, and when I go and lift today, I'll have been fasted all day, right? I haven't eaten anything all day today, and yesterday I only ate, I ate a 90% or 80% fat diet, right? I only ate one meal yesterday, I fasted until dinner and then I ate a high fat diet and I actually w went and ran 10 miles. So I depleted my glycogen. So I've talked about this a little bit before, but the mechanism that I'm hoping to take advantage of here is insulin sensitivity. So when you have low carbohydrates or you're fasting for some period of time, your body becomes more insulin sensitive, which is actually the opposite of diabetes. So the problem that we have with, with diabetes, the reason why people get diabetes, again, I'm not a doctor, so this is not medical advice, but this is what I understand. The, the reason why people get diabetes is because they become resistant to insulin, right? So their insulin sensitivity decreases. What does that mean? Okay, let, let's, let's break this down. You eat something, okay? You eat some carbohydrates. It has to be carbohydrates or protein, but because fats don't don't create a insulin response. But let's say you eat some carbohydrates, right? Your your body breaks that down and, and increases the glucose in your blood, right? It produces glucose in your blood. Now that glucose, that sugar in your blood, which is what's needed, the the, the preferred energy source for the cells of your body. What ends up happening is that the way that that gets out of the blood is that at the same time. When this glucose goes in the blood, your body releases insulin from your pancreas, right? This insulin, what it does is it is it, it allows your body to uh, to pull the glucose out. So the, you have insulin receptors on many of your cells, your fat cells and your muscle cells especially, right? And those insulin receptors, and some of them are triggered at different times. This is, this is kind of the key here. What they do is they bind to the insulin and that, it, is able to pull the glucose out of the blood so you end up having less glucose in the blood the energy goes to the cells you get fat <laughs> now when you're when you're desensitized to insulin right when you're not sensitive to insulin what ends up happening is you need more insulin to get that that blood that blood sugar down so that's what what happens with diabetes is that you you know typically with diabetes if you're type 2 diabetes type 1 diabetes means you don't produce the insulin so you can't get that, you can't naturally get that blood sugar out. You need actual ins insulin injections, right, in order to be able to do that. But when you're type 2 diabetes, what it means is you're insulin resistant. So also known as metabolic syndrome in some cases or pre-diabetic. But when, what ends up happening is that you need more and more of that insulin in order to get that blood sugar. So you end up having high blood sugar and high blood sugar is damaging to your body, right? That's 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 something that can cause a whole host of problems, a whole symptoms of diabetes. The destruction that happens from having that high blood sugar is 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 what happens. That's that's the mechanism of the disease. 
So with that said, what I'm doing is actually the opposite. If you think, if you think about it now, when you suddenly get a bunch of sugar in your, in your system, yes, you're going to have high blood sugar, but immediately because you are also releasing insulin, producing insulin, is going to reduce that blood sugar. It's going to quickly pull that into the cells where, where they're needed, especially if you've depleted your glycogen. And now here's the, here's the key part of this, right? It depends on what you're doing, right? Because you have insulin receptors in your fat cells. You also have them in your muscle cells. Now, the, the ones in your muscle cells become active or become more active in two conditions. One of them being that your glycogen is depleted. So glycogen is sort of the storage of, of glucose that is stored with water that is in your muscles that basically gives you that energy that you need. It's immediately, it's localized energy. So your muscles all store glycogen, right? And that glycogen can only be used by that particular muscle, except for your liver. Your liver has glycogen as well. But but in general, right? So what happens is that when you're in need of like fast energy, it's right there in the muscle. You know, you've got glycogen in your shoulder muscle. You need to do something quickly with your shoulder. Like it's, it's going to be there for you. The same thing with the rest of the muscles in your body. And so what ends up happening is that if you deplete that glycogen, your body's first response is going to be to fill up those glycogen stores again to fill up the tanks essentially. Now also if you lift weights, it's going to activate the insulin receptors on those muscles. So they're going to, it's kind of a similar process. They're going to uptake that glucose and, and make glycogen or, you know, or they're going to be able to do cellular repair at the, at the muscle level. It's going to take in uh, glucose instead of storing it in the fat cells. So what I'm doing here when I'm fasting all day and then I'm eating carbohydrates like right after lifting is I'm basically at the most insulin sensitive where my body is going to respond highest to insulin. I am taking carbohydrates after lifting so that I'm going to replenish that glycogen and so that that glucose is going to go into the muscles instead of going to the fat cells. Had I not lifted and done that, it might go into the fat cells. Now it's still going to go into the muscles some because glycogen is going to get depleted naturally even if you're not working out. It's just going to happen faster, especially if you're lifting, then you're going to have it more localized to those areas. So you're going to get actually a better response by by doing this and you're actually going to become less likely to become diabetic. Now, I know for a fact that a lot of people that are doing ketogenic diets have been able to reverse and cure their diabetes and and also combined with fasting or or, or even just fasting is the very similar mechanisms if you think about it. Basically, the lack of carbohydrates for a length a lengthy period of time causes you to become more insulin sensitive. It's almost like if you think about it, again, not this is not fully understood medically, but I, I've definitely seen evidence of this of this being true. But if you think about it, if you're exposed to glucose in your blood too much, if you if you've got so much going on all the time, like we we tend to eat in our Western diets, we eat so many carbohydrates. If you eat all these carbohydrates, pretty soon your body becomes a little resistant to that. It, it can't always. It's having trouble processing all of this. You know, you're getting too much insulin, so it starts to become resistant to insulin, and and now it's it's less effective, right? You're you're over overblowing the the horn, and and now when you need it, it it's not there for you. So when you back off when you say, okay, I'm, I'm going to not provide sugar, right? Then it sort of resensitizes you to insulin. Now, I don't know the exact mechanism of why this works, but this is what we're, we're finding. And, and we're seeing some really good evidence of this. Again, I'm in a Facebook group. You can actually check it out. It's called Two Keto Dudes. Just search for it on, on Facebook. The One of the founders of this has a podcast called Two Keto Dudes, and he is actually the founder of .NET Rocks podcast, or one of the co-hosts on, on .NET Rocks. So, uh, so you, you could you could check that out. I actually did an interview uh, with him, uh, and his name Carl Franklin. Yes, uh, how could I don't know how I blanked that, but you can check out the interview I did with with Carl Franklin here. That's so funny that I blanked his name. Sorry, Carl. I just you know brain fart here. I, I need some insulin. <laughs> I need some glucose for my brain apparently, but uh, but you can check that out. Anyway, uh, they they have. In that Facebook group, there are amazing results of people like reversing their diabetes by going ketogenic diets and doing long-term fasting. So there's definitely some proven health benefits there, and you know it'll take some time for medical science to totally catch up and to 
say yes this is this is it we bless this but it's gonna it's gonna happen i'm telling you because i'm seeing i mean if you go to that group you will be a believer because you will see actual people losing tons of weight and curing their diabetes amazing amazing stuff so i hope that answers your question maybe maybe a little bit more detail than you plan but you know that's it. That's how it works. And, and that's why I'm not afraid. I'm actually utilizing what, what you said to get that sugar spike in order to, to grow muscle. And it's actually the way that I'm able to gain muscle or to at least keep muscle and be able to run 40 miles a week is because I am basically using this, the, the insulin sensitivity and the timing of, of these carbohydrates to, to optimize the, the muscle growth and muscle retention, even though I'm doing a lot of cardio and I'm doing a lot of fasting. Without that, uh, you know, I, I, could, I, would, I would deplete uh, my reserves and I would possibly lose, lose a lot of muscle. I hope you find that interesting. Some of you will find that interesting. Some of you will be like, what the hell, John? I don't even get any of this. That's fine. If you do find it interesting and you haven't subscribed already, click that subscribe button below and I will talk to you next time. Take care.